Today I'm exploring Albania. Albania, of course, is a country in Europe. It is applying to be a part of the European Union and has got a very interesting history in relation to things like its bunkers. Um, over 700,000 bunkers were built, small concrete shelters, uh, ranging to even bigger concrete shelters all over the country. There are 50 rings around Tirana, apparently, with uh, bunkers, basically for the defence of the main city of the uh, of the region. But also the beaches are full of bunkers here in Durez. Apparently there are some, I tried very hard to find them, uh, but unfortunately all these holiday makers are enjoying themselves and make it hard to kind of point out what is a bunker or not. But I did find uh, bunkers more towards the interior around Tirana uh, specifically. I'm going to explore some of that in this video, as well as some of the more I suppose interesting uh, things from the landscape that I saw as well. We might start by going straight to the part um, of the bunkers in the Wikipedia. Concrete military bunkers, basically a very common site in Albania, an average of 5.7 bunkers for every square kilometer. Um, obviously some regions having it much more intense uh, than other regions, especially in the mountains, you can expect that to be a lower number, so quite high in other places like around Tirana specifically. Built during the Hoxhaus government led by uh, the leader Enver Hoxha from the 1960s to 1980s, um, as the government fortified Albania by building more than 750,000 bunkers. This program of bunkerization resulted in the construction of bunkers in every corner of the People's Socialist Republic of Albania, which was at the time a communist, ranging from mountain passes to city streets. They were never used for their intended purpose. Uh, the cost of the construction was a drain on Albania's resources, diverting them away from dealing with the country's housing shortage and poor roads. Uh, the bunkers were abandoned during the uh, dissolution of the communist government in 92. A few were used uh, in the Albania insurrection in 97 and the Kosovo War, the Kosovo War of 99. Most are now derelict, though some have been used for a variety of different purposes, such as uh, yeah, well, residential accommodation, cafes and storehouses, but also as a shelter for uh, bats. Um, by accident, it seems that the, uh, the bats are doing quite well. Um, Albania bunkers down with ideal habitats for bats. Um, yeah, basically a rare species of bats are finding sanctuary uh, in what are a bit like caves for them, I suppose. I wanted to just point that out, a uh, little news article that I saw while doing the research for this video. Um, okay, let's jump back to here. A little bit of history about Albania that I didn't know before, I just thought was kind of relevant to bring up. Um, yeah, so it's been kind of an interesting history in the sense that there's been so many different people in control of Albania. Um, the Ottomans were in control for a while, then the Italians had control, then the Nazis had control, then there was a communist regime. And now it's a yeah a more de democratic uh, country with a 68 score on the uh, Freedom House Index, 28 for political rights, 40 for civil liberties. So that's good, uh, much higher than it used to be, I'm sure. We'll go a little bit into detail here for a few moments, just because I think it is uh, a bit relevant and interesting. From the end of World War II to his death in 85, Enver Hoxha pursued a style of politics um, informed by hardline Stalinism, as well as some elements of Maoism. He broke with the Soviet Union after cross Khrushchev uh, embarked on his reformist Khrushchev Ta, withdrew Albania from the Warsaw Pact in 68 in protest of the Warsaw Pact invasion of Czechoslovakia, and broke with China after US President Nixon uh, 1972 visit to China. So basically kind of didn't feel aligned anymore to any of these communist regimes. His government was hostile against his immediate neighbours. Albania um, yeah, basically had an ongoing state of war with Greece for a very long time until 87, since World War II. Also issues with other neighbours, um, Tito's government, Yugoslavia, um, so on and so forth, Kosovo. Uh, yeah, basically not being happy with what was happening in Kosovo. Albania still maintained some links with the outside world during this time, training with neutral countries such as Austria and Sweden. But overall, we were very, very isolated. Um, of course, this is not good for growth. And then there were also the regimes, control of the country, limited private property, forbade foreign loans. Yeah, basically a decade of isolation, economic stagnation. Being cut off from the outside world it's not very good for a country when you're trying to build up um, the capital in the country to make basically a better standard of living and of course i suppose that effect kind of is still resonating up until this day in the country because you just lose out on those years of growth um, and we will see in the energy again that because albania is basically independent uh, had produced a lot of hydroelectricity again showing how actually underdeveloped the country is whenever we see a country that has just hydro as its electricity i've kind of seen this trend it means that they're often underdeveloped um yeah other bits here about how they had concept of a people's war trying to make kind of a mythology of the uh of the of world war ii and successes trying to legitimize the rule and all part of that uh plan was were these bunkers so we have different types of bunkers the most common type um of bunkers a small concrete dome set to the ground um just large enough for one or two people to stand known as 
a firing position bunker or queue said uh, they were prefabricated and transported to their final positions where they were assembled they kind of looked a bit like this one yeah they could stand inside they could shoot uh, placed uh, along the coast line large number of qc bunkers were built in groups of three often with prefabricated concrete tunnels to connect them um yeah tirana here again be mentioned with those 50 co concentric circles around the city which i think is super cool we can maybe skip to that for a minute so i did spend a long time looking around random places in the forest i think that there is a bunker but i could find a better one than that this one here is also a bunker i think that's three four five different bunkers uh in the forest there not really much to see but um yeah i thought it was cool to actually be able to see them from space uh here's kind of like a quarry with bunkers in them again the image quality isn't great unfortunately but that definitely is a dome i definitely would say that that would be a bunker another one there you just see these started around the place most of them are in the forest so it is kind of hard to see them from the maps but um yeah, i was happy i was able to find some those were the best ones probably that i could find i spent a long time looking on the beaches for some but unfortunately when you got all these holiday makers having so much fun it's a little bit hard to uh, distinguish what's a tent from a around bunker um like potentially some of these things here could be bunkers but there's just no way of knowing that there, for example, could be one or it could be a tent. Um, yeah, really unfortunate for someone trying to make a video, but obviously lovely, lovely touristic spot. People are having a great time. So that's great. Uh, not good for me, though. I'll close these tabs here as well. Um, yeah, there was also one here, I believe. That could maybe have been one, but that could be a house as well. It's just hard to be certain of these fields. But that's all close to Tirana, uh, the capital. That's how you can pronounce the capital's name. Um, big enough city didn't see anything specific other than actually i did find something interesting if i go to these tabs here um it's a dam oh yeah this was on the outside of the city this is just a lake resort i suppose i just found this particular construction very weird uh, we've got these kind of square buildings and these kind of l-shaped kind of like they're floating on the water or built in the water i thought that was kind of i don't know kind of worth seeing and i kind of have these yeah this continuation of these interesting lake shapes um and some kind of terraces here in the hills that are vineyards vineyards uh, different reservoirs yeah, kind of interesting i'll close that tab again now um, that's the hydro dam one of the bigger hydro dams there are quite a lot of hydro projects in albania to be fair uh, they are a pretty mountainous country when we zoom out again here i kind of appreciate there's a lot of mountains to the east so a lot of rainfall all flowing out towards the mediterranean which is a or even the adriatic sea i suppose is the correct term for that part of the mediterranean but uh yeah it's kind of a blessing to have those reservoirs of water these kind of lakes up the mountains and flowing out towards the sea giving you that elevation gain um but actually elevation loss which is perfect for hydro and they have a lot of big hydro projects kind of in the pipelines some of them are, some of them have been held back like i think this one here is this is one of the big bigger rivers uh actually yeah this is probably the uh the hydro that we just oh there's a different one cool there's a few rivers that haven't been accessed yet for hydro because they're kind of having these various considerations about oh it's bad for the uh, biodiversity and they're trying to apply for the eu and eu groups are saying it's bad for like the the plants and the animals and etc etc so they're kind of trying to just strike a balance between providing power cheap power for the country but also trying to gain access to the eu um yeah this is actually quite a big reservoir actually i should have seen that earlier yeah cool um one of the longer rivers a lot of the rivers have these kind of sandy deltas around them. We might come across it again in a minute, so I'd probably close the tab. Probably It's probably this one. Yeah, I think it is this one. Um, I think this is called the Voce. Or, yeah, can't fully pronounce it. But very big sandy deltas, uh, if you call it a delta. Deltas are normally by the sea, but I guess it's just a part of the river where a lot of sediment has been left over the years. Quite a, quite a pretty region, actually. And the river does get a bit stronger uh, and wider, closer to the sea it does get. And that's where possibly there would be potential for hydro but of course once you're just close to the sea there isn't much elevation gain anymore even though you have more water moving per minute it's moving slower so normally that's why you build uh, back up a reservoir further up the river uh, and do it there okay i think i'll close this tab to save my cpu um this was a mine there's a few different mines so we have chrome albania interestingly produces chrome quite high quality chrome is what i came across um i couldn't find anything specific to say oh that's a particular part of the chrome architecture uh infrastructure but there are just these random big mines you can see here a lot of machinery um a lot of uh infrastructure um and then just big kind of open cast mine areas i suppose moving down here the mountain has been basically broken up and the sediment has been shifted through and they're just yeah mining out that material there's another big mine to the left here somewhere but i think that one's actually closed um 
A bit confusing. Google Maps says a lot of these mines are actually closed, but it's hard to know how correct that information often is. What's that? That's just some more sediment. Yeah, so I think that was the chrome mine. There's also a bish a bishuman mine. Don't know what bishuman is, but uh, that's what it was called on Google Maps. There's another, yeah, another random mining town there. Um, if we go here, this is by the coast. Um, again, I have kind of problems identifying what these big, massive areas soft and are. Sometimes I think they're like for salt, but I don't know. Um, someone in my Brunei video told me that some of the tanks that I saw were actually for shrimp and fish farming. Don't think that's the case here. But look at the crazy colors. It reminds me of salt production. Could be wrong though. We've got kind of pastel yellows, cream colors, whites. Um, yeah, this reminds me of tailing ponds um, leftovers, but of course it wouldn't be in this case. There's no mine here. Here we've got normal, what I would call fields. I think that's just normal agricultural land. This definitely isn't agricultural land. This is something else I would venture to say. Very cool though. It would be cool to drive along that and see what it looks like. Let's quickly go to the um, to these maps. See if we can locate that area. Um, it would be around here somewhere. Yeah, this is actually that same location. Look at the interesting lines too. Um, is it the same? I think it's roughly around here. It's very similar if it isn't the same. Um, very curious. Let me see if I can quickly guess the uh, coordinates for this. Yeah, that's that kind of bit there with the little island. We'll say right here. Okay, here we are. Protected area. Uh, natural lagoon, natural lagoon, bird watching area. That's interesting. Um, yeah, colors are still quite intense here, but no sign of any uh, particular government economic program. No sign. Okay, let's put down this guy. Can this guy give us some? visuals to what this location could be about. Look at that. That is intense. This is a real picture, by the way. Wow. <laughs> this is, is like something from Star Wars. It doesn't look like a, a real place at all. Wow. Um, interesting. I'm going to pause the video for a minute and see if I can find what this actually is. So yeah, it's a salt lake, a uh, salt evaporation pond, basically. Um, salt lake probably being not quite the correct term, but certainly uh, a salt production area. Um, we type in Albania Salt Lake, amazing view, Narta Salt Evaporation Pond turns pink. So at least I managed to figure that one out today, uh, which is nice and pretty cool. Okay, moving on. Um, let's see, actually, we go to the economy tab, what we have here about salt. Because there's actually quite a few different things in the economy. Service, 54%, agricultural, 21%, industry, uh, 24%. Natural resources, a couple of them. Bolstered by agricultural, food processing, lumber, oil, cement, chemicals, mining, basic metals. Here's the hydropower, tourism, of course, uh, petroleum extraction, interesting. The strongest sectors are energy, which I guess would be the hydro, mining, sorry you about the mining already. Um, yeah, in terms of export and imports, a lot of export goods listed here actually, apparel, foot, clothing, footwear, asphalt, metals, metallic ores, crude oil, cement, no salt though. Uh, maybe it's just such a small amount in the economy. Main export partners, direct neighbor, well, across the sea, Greece is there, but Italy across the sea, um, Spain, Germany, China, Kosovo, basically a lot of local, um, a lot of local trading. Main import partners: Italy, because they have a lot of machinery, equipment, things like that. Greece, Kosovo, Turkey, China, Germany. Again, very mixed, balanced group of uh, countries to be exporting to. Not one jumping out as a big one there, other than Italy itself. Uh, demographics slightly interesting. One of the lower fertility rates per woman uh, in the world. This is saying one point three two. The article here reference of one point seven. Um, we just go lowest. Uh, total fertility rate of 1.7 children per mother is one of the lowest in the world. So that's kind of worth mentioning. There's a few, yeah, a little bit of detail here about the kind of the way they had a higher growth rate in when they became independent in 1912 and the smallest debt rate in Europe at the time of the Second World War, population increases, policies uh, pursued by the communist government. Um, yeah, fuel the 2.5% annual increase for 45 years, blah, 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 yeah, different topics there. Probably don't want to go into too much detail in, on that particular one. Yeah, I think we kind of explored most of this. Here's the, a map on the hydro production. How it has increased since the 1980s. Uh, fossil fuel production really has really diminished and hydro is doing so much for the economy. Pretty cool, but again, kind of highlighting they don't have probably that much um, yeah, large industry that needs a lot of electricity or, or their hydro um, amount is just so good. Albania is the biggest producer of hydroelectricity energy in the world by percentage, 90% as of 2011. Of course, that would have changed in the last 10 years, but 
pretty pretty cool all the same. Um, if we have a look here, we can actually see a map of one of the hydro dams that I showed you earlier on. This kind of road snaking up through it. Quite a big dam, um, quite a cool dam. I do have another picture of that here from above. You can see here how, even though it doesn't look like a big distance um, from like yeah from the top of the dam down to the bottom, you can actually see here how how long that distance actually is. Pretty cool. And yeah, that big reservoir backing up all that water on that river. Um, other than that, we have yeah another river there. That's that's a project that hasn't been completed yet actually. Um, this is outside Tirana. This is probably sewage treatment or something like that, or, or water treatment plant. That's my guess. But again, I've been wrong about these before. But I thought it looked cool, so I wanted to show it to you on the map. Um, and yeah, other than that, not a crazy amount that I actually wanted to show you. I think the most interesting thing actually were those salt, uh, that salt evaporation pond. Now that I think about it, the intense color is really pretty cool. And um, yeah, I think I'll just go back here to the image one more time and I'll leave it at that.